Afro Tales Podcast is a part of the Connected Podcast Network. Ahoy, my friends. Welcome aboard the Afro Tales Podcast. I'm your storyteller, Amon Mazinga. Join me as we explore the tales that grew from the people of indigenous and African descent in the Americas and the Caribbean. After, come and see me, Chef, who will impart upon you a recipe for the story you have just heard. So with no further ado, let us set sail on this new age of exploration. The Legends of the Inca Kings The Inca, Yokwe Yapanqui, had grown old without an heir. And now it was widely believed that he was too old, too weak to father a child. Yet one day, as he sat grieving deep in sorrow, the sun god appeared to him in human form and consoled him, saying, Do not grieve, Yokwe Yapanqui, for the descendants shall be great lords. You shall father a child. Upon hearing this, the Inca reported to his kinsmen, who in turn made it known to the people. Then they set about to find him a wife. It was his own brother, being the one who knew best the Inca's nature, who selected the bride. He found her in the town of Oma, asked permission of her relatives, obtained her, and brought her to Cusco. This woman was called Mama and by her the Inca was to have a son whose name would be Maita Capec. Mama Koa had been pregnant only three months when her son was born. He was born with teeth. He was living. And so quickly did he grow that at the end of one year he was large and strong as an eight-year-old. By the time he was two, he was fighting with young men and could beat them and injure them severely. They say that he joined in the games with certain youths of the Alquiza and the Kulanchima tribe who lived in the vicinity of Cusco. And he hurt a great many of them. And some were even killed. One day, in a dispute over who might drink water from a particular fountain, he broke the leg of the son of the Alquiza's chief lord. And he chased the other boys into the houses where the Alquiza had been living in peace without troubling the Incas. At last, the Alquizas could no longer endure the attacks of Maita Capac. And though they knew he was the Inca's favorite and well guarded by his kinsmen, they were nonetheless prepared to kill him. They were ready to risk their lives. They selected 10 among themselves, and these were set to the house of the sun, where Yokwe Yapanqui and Maita Capec lived. As they entered, intending to kill them both, it happened that Maita Capec was playing ball with some other boys in the palace court. When he saw his enemies arriving, bearing arms, he hurled a ball in their direction, and one of them was hit and killed. Then he attacked the others and made them flee. And although they escaped, they fled with many wounds. This then is how they returned to their chief lord. When the Alquizas and the Kulunchimas were made aware of the injury that had been done on their people, they were filled with fear. Maite Capac was only a child. What might he do when he became a man? Now, truly, they were prepared to risk their lives. Gathering all their people together, they set out to make war against the Incas. Then Yokwe was troubled. He feared he would be destroyed and he reprimanded his son. Maite Capac saying, Child! Why have you injured these people? I'm an old man. Would you have me die in the hands of our enemies? But the Inca's own subjects who loved to pillage 
who preferred war over peace and lived by thievery spoke up in favor of Mitre and told the Inca to keep still and not speak against his son. Then indeed, Yokwe no longer reprimanded his son. The Alquizas and the Chimas prepared their troops. Maita Capec likewise took command of his subjects. Both sides gave battle. And though at first the contest was even, with neither side prevailing, then at last when each party had fought long, each hoping to win the victory, the Aquiza and the Kulunchimas were defeated by the subjects of Maita Kappa. But the Aquizas were not disheartened. They came again and with greater spirit. They attacked the house of the sun and pounded it on three sides. At first, Maita Kapek, having retired to his quarters, was unaware of what had happened. But then he emerged. He came out last. He routed them. He defeated them. Then he danced, adorned with fire and regal. Still, the Alquizas would not desist. Again they called Maita to battle and again he accepted. But they say that now a hailstorm fell on the Aquizas so that all of them were finally defeated. Then Maita Cape took their chief lord and kept him in prison until he died. Indeed, this Maita Cape was bold. He was the first since the days of Manco Capec to take up arms and win victories. And they say that Maya Capec inherited the sunbird that Manco Capec had brought with him when he founded Cusco. Always the bird had been locked within a hamper of woven reeds, handed down from Inca to Inca, and no one had ventured to open it. For all were timid. But Maya Takape was more daring than they. He wished to see what his forebearers had kept so carefully hidden. He opened the hand. He took out the sunbird and spoke to it. Truly, they say, it answered him in oracles. And because of it, he grew wise. He knew what would happen. He could foretell the future. Chapter 2 The Storm When Topa Inca Yapanqui was lord and had conquered many provinces, then for a long time he rested in great contentment. But finally, and in different places, there came a rebellion of the Ayanku, the Kalanku, and the Chakwi. These tribes would not be subjects of the Inca. And so the Inca fought with them for 12 years, enlisting many thousands of his people, all of whom, however, were destroyed. Then the Inca mourned. He was deeply troubled, thinking, what will be come of us and then one day he thought to himself why do i offer the gods my gold and silver my woven robes my food and everything else that i have now this moment i will send for them and they can help me against these rebels then he spoke aloud and summoned them with these words Wherever you are, come, you who receive gold and silver. Then the god said, yes. And they came. Pachacamac came in a litter. And so too in litters did the other gods from every part of Tawantisuyo. They all came together in the great square of Cusco. Paricaca, however, had not yet arrived. Should I go or should I not go? He was unable to make up his mind. 
Then at last he sent his son, Makawisa, saying, Go and listen. When Makawisa arrived, he sat down in the rear next to his litter, and the Inca began to speak. O oh, fathers, gods and spirits, you know already how I have made you sacrificial offerings of gold and silver. My heart has been filled with devotion and seeing that I have served you well, could you not come at my aid? Now that I am losing many thousands of my people, it is for this I have called you. But when he had spoken, not a one gave him answer. They merely sat there saying nothing. Then the Inca spoke again. Speak! You made and created these people. Will you let them die in battle? Help me! Or I will have you all burned on the spot. Why should I serve and adorn you with gold and silver? With food by the basket full and drink. With llamas of mine and with everything else that I have. You hear my sorrow, and if you will not aid me or even speak, you must burn on the spot. These were his words. Then Pachacamac began to speak. Inca, O oh, rising sun, ah. Who can violently shake all things, even you and the whole earth? I have not spoken, for were I to destroy these rebels, then you too, and even the earth would likewise be destroyed. And so I sit here saying nothing. Then at last, Though the remaining spirits kept their silence, the one who was called Makawise began to speak. Inca, O oh rising sun, I will go forth. You will remain behind and watch over your subjects and protect them with your thoughts. I will go at once. For your sake, I will conquer. As he spoke, metal poured from his mouth like an outflowing vapor. And there before him were golden panpipes. He blew on the panpipes and made music. Also, he had a flute. And it too was gold. Upon his head he wore a headdress. His staff was gold, his tunic was black, then, so that Makawise could go, the Inca gave him of his own litters and selected strong litter bearers from among the Koiweya, who, in but few days, could cover many days' distance. And so they carried Makawise in a litter against the enemy. When they had brought him to a little mountain, Makawise, being Perikaka's son, began to make it rain, at first gently. And the people living in the villages below thought, what is this? And prepared themselves for the worst. Then Makawise flashed lightning and made more and more rain until all the villages were carried away in a flood. And where the villages had been, he made gullies. With lightning, he destroyed their overlord and their nobles. Only a few of the people were saved. But had he willed it, he could have destroyed them all, having conquered them totally. He led the survivors back to Cusco. From that time on, the Inca revered Pericaca even more than he had been and furnished him with 50 attendants to make him sacrificial offerings. 
Then to Pedicaca's son, he said, Father Makawisa, what can I give you? Whatever you wish, demand it of me. Anything. These were his words. But the God answered, I will have nothing at all. Only that you worship me as our sons from Waha do. And the Inca said, Very well, Father. But he was filled with fear, thinking, Perhaps he could destroy me too. And therefore he wished to make him an offering of anything whatsoever. And so he said, Eat, Father. And gave him food. The Mariquisa replied, I am not accustomed to eating food. Bring me coral. Then he gave him coral and he ate it at once with a crunch sounding <coughs> though he asked for nothing else. The Inca presented him with the sun maidens, but he did not take them. And so Makawise set off for home to report to his father, Pariacaca. And after that, the Incas in later days would come to worship in Waha and dance dances of veneration. So, wow. Yeah, this is part one of a two-part season finale. Still, the last two stories, at least for this season, coming out of Latin American Folktales by Jean Beerhurst, the Inca Kings. And just something quick, I did not know that their empire was only about 100 years, a century. That is bananas. I'm not giving a long um, analysis of these first two chapters in this because there's three more chapters that are coming in part two. And I really want to say something about it when it all ends and there are so many youtube videos and um, websites and articles that you can read to get an in-depth and knowledgeable um, account of what happened in the incan empire these are just a folktale version of what happened in the inca empire OK, so just keep that in mind when you're listening to these last two episodes, much like uh, Montezuma. That was a a folktale version of what happened. This is a folktale version of what happened in the Inca Empire. And it's great to start the, I guess, Mesoamerican, Central and South American trail with Montezuma and end it with the Inca. It's, I feel like I could have just done a whole season strictly in Central and South America. And maybe I'll do something like that one day. But again, it's a great story. Come back for the season finale. Thank you for listening to me. Read these stories, tell these tales, and give my little bit at the end and also i'm pretty sure a lot of you guys have tried these recipes if you have recipes that you want me to share please send them to me afro tales cast at everything it's literally everywhere so um not gonna hold you long go see chef he has a wonderful um recipe understand most of the incas were vegan so this will be a vegan recipe and the next one will probably also be vegan. So just keep that in mind. All right. See you guys later. Go see Chef. Come back for the se- for the season finale next week. And until then, as always, have a blessed day. Welcome to the gallery, my friend. I am your chef. Chef, and today 
We have a wonderful recipe inspired by the story you have just heard. Today, we will be creating Inca quinoa stir fry. Now, what will you need for this recipe? One cup red quinoa, two cups filtered water, one eggplant salted and thinly sliced, four yellow squash thinly sliced, one zucchini thinly sliced also, half a red capsicum also thinly sliced, one bunch of bok choy coarsely chopped, and two garlic cloves crushed. Now, how do we put this together? Easy. First, you will cook the quinoa and water in a saucepan until white rims around the periphery of the grain. Then you can reduce the heat to low and keep it covered. Next, you will saute garlic cloves in a small amount of water. Stir fry the eggplant, the squash, the zucchini, capsicum until they are tender. Now you can add the bok choy and stir fry until cooked. Then you combine all with the quinoa and serve. And that is it my friend. Very simple recipe. Now you go do what you do. Make this recipe yours. And until I have another wonderful recipe for you. Remember what has happened so far with the Inca kings. And until next time, my friends, enjoy. Thank you for joining us on this voyage. Thanks to Art by Chalet for the logo, episode, and t-shirt designs. You may also get a t-shirt and other items on tpublic.com. You can contact me on all socials at Afro Tales Cast, that's Afro T A L E S Cast, and email me at Afro Tales Podcast at Yahoo.com. You may also become a benefactor by simply sharing with any and everyone, giving a thumbs up, or rating in your podcast app of choice. If you wish to donate, I am on Patreon and Coffee.com, that's K O dash fi.com so until we meet again may your winds be fair and your seas follow